Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we believe that everyone needs to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, RWJ Barnabas Health, PSENG, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities, NJM Insurance Group, Delta Dental of New Jersey, everyone deserves a healthy smile, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, and by Johnson & Johnson. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source and NorthJersey.com. And by Meadowlands Regional Chamber, building essential connections that drive business growth. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got, got this? There it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> I don't care how good you are or how good you think you are. There is always something to learn. Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. This is an edition of One on Two. That you're not going to want to miss. Let me introduce these two characters. I don't mean that in a bad way, but you're from Long Island. Yeah, we so, you are know. characters. I'm a Jersey guy. <laughs> you get it. Uh, Mark Cronin, president and co founder of John's Crazy Socks, and John Cronin, chief happiness officer and founder. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Glad it's to great be to here. have you. Thank you so much. Uh, tell me this, John. By the way, you got some socks to show in a second, but what does it mean to be the chief happiness officer? Um, I, I am in a company. Right. What's our mission? I just, I just bring happiness. Bring happiness? Hold on. But how do you bring happiness and still make a profit? Now, first of all, with these socks, let me, let me, let me grab those for me. I'll show you. I'm going to show the camera if we can get this. Describe what these socks are. Did anyone wear these socks? I, I, yeah. The, I, I, I saw people wearing my socks. And plus, uh, one of them. Uh, uh, George Bush. Um, George Bush wore these. George H.W. Oh, 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 George H.W. Right. H.W. So, wore those on World Down Syndrome Day, right? Right. And he tweeted out a picture and thanked you for them, right? Because you right. gave it to him. I did. And who designed those socks? I did. I, I did. Um, I just had, I just had superhero socks. Right. And um, I, I, I did. I did my idea. I, I drew the uh, picture of it. I, I drew it. Uh, you I saw the picture. Sorry for interrupting. You saw the picture. You drew it. So and how did it go from drawing to this? Well, in that particular one, John drew it, and we gave it to our sock designer, and we turned it into a sock. That's the Down Syndrome Superhero Sock, and it's one of our awareness socks that raises money for our charity partners um, because many of the socks are charity and awareness socks that raise money for, uh, in this case, for the National Down Syndrome Society and for a local Long Island group called ACDS. You guys are Long Island people. You know, by the way, we're seeing that on, on the island, so we, we appreciate uh, all the support we get out there. But what's interesting to me is, is that you were telling me right before we got on the air that this isn't just by f uh, philanthropy, uh, charitable work, all really important, but you said this is a business. There's a business model. Describe it. It is. It's a social enterprise. And what that means is we have a twin mission, a social mission, and a business mission. They're indivisible, and they feed off of each other. For example? Well, the social mission is driven, first, by inspiration and hope. We want to show the world what can happen when you give somebody a chance, specifically people with intellectual disabilities. So John is the face of the company, right? Right. Exactly. He's the brand. And every time people yeah. see John on a show like this, it starts to change the perception of what somebody with a disability can do. We hire people with disabilities, so we've been fortunate enough to create 33 jobs. 15 of those are people with differing abilities. How good are they? They're fabulous. It is not altruism. It's a good business decision. What makes them good? They show up on time, they want to work, they're enthusiastic, they're focused, they're energized, right? 
Right. And it makes yeah. it a better place to work. We want people coming into our workplace to see. Retention is sky high. Mm. Morale is sky high. Productivity is high. So we have this social mission. The giving back is part of that. So 5% of our earnings go where? Our, fi- our five earnings to our, our Better Olympics. Is the Special a, Olympics. Because he's a Special Olympic athlete. Okay. So when you're, by the way, we're partners with the folks at Special Olympics. They are great people. Um, when you were in the Special Olympics, did you compete in competition? That's you. Wait a minute. That's you. Yeah. What are you doing there? <laughs> uh, I, actually, uh, I, I get played this, but uh, I'm in a, a, a free fun sport. Uh, it's just my fifth sport. Uh, that's uh, your fifth sport? I, no, it's just my fifth sport. Oh, your first, I'm, I'm sorry. Favorite, what is it? Uh, uh, snowshoeing. Snowshoeing. What, I, I, could, let me ask you something. You're an athlete. You've got talent. I'm just an old guy. You think I could do it? I think my dad, I believe my dad would do it. <laughs> and, uh, I, he can. Wait a minute. You're, hold on one second. No disrespect. <laughs> You're saying your dad could do it, but I can't do it. I, he, he can. <laughs> I, I use a stuck list. Uh, uh, I, I, I use studio. <laughs> you stay in the studio, huh? You think I'm better off in the studio. I think you're right. But uh, uh, let, me, let me, in all seriousness, I got to ask you something. When he comes up with this idea, right, and he starts talking to you about these uh, what are you thinking? Well, there was a context. It was his last year of school. He was in Huntington High School, right? Right. Oh, yeah. And like everybody else, trying to figure out, what do I do when I'm done with school? Yep. The first thing you said was what? A first idea. Um, well, not a first idea, but what did you tell me you wanted to do? Oh, I was going to do business with my dad. He wanted to go into business with me. With you? With me. He had worked for me before, and he said, I want to go into business. Had a couple of non-starter ideas. What was the second one? A food truck. A food truck. Food truck. What was the problem with the food truck? We can't cook. Yeah, we can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then, that's a bit of a problem. Where did the socks come but in? But then he came right before what? Thanksgiving and said what? I said, I want to sell socks. Um, I, I, I can't have a, 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 a crazy movement. Um, I like I like one crazy sock my entire life. I think it's, I think it's fun. Sure. I guess he's a, a sock, or co- very colorful. I love being creative, and uh, and uh, I let me be me. So hold we on just, one second. I don't know why I grabbed this one. This is John's crazy socks. Is this, is this a gorilla? It's a gorilla. Get it's that made shot. Got... By one of our suppliers. That's a gorilla sock. A gorilla sock. How you... many different socks do we have? We have nineteen hundred. No, 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 no. <laughs> nineteen hundred. Yeah. Yes. Nineteen hundred different kind of socks. See. Let me ask you something. Which, this is the this is the that's the superhero sock. But we have autism awareness socks. We have pull, pull, pull one of them out. This who wore this one? So who wore that one this past weekend? Uh, past weekend, um, I and Charles Charles W. This is, first. This is I'm sorry for interrupting. This is to Barbara Bush's funeral. Yeah. Yeah. They had, uh, These. John had developed a relationship with President Bush, and last Thursday they called us and said he wanted wow. to wear these socks to honor Mrs. Bush. That's beautiful. So we sent a box of 20 socks down. Um, we didn't know that it would be a big deal. It's a big um, deal. By the way, these women's socks? They are. We okay. have. I'm looking for, do you know what I'm doing, right? You, <laughs> you know I'm looking, looking for, for socks for you. myself. Well, you might try those shark the socks. Shark. Put, okay, I'll put the full shoulder down. Uh, fold it down. Uh, what do you, I think these are perfect for me. Um, what do you think? What? Okay, hold on. What do you think? Hold on. Get a shot. You get this shot? Those look good? They would be perfect. <laughs> that would look Number, good. You like this? I, I do. Give I it up. Give, give it up. I'm going with these. Awesome. I'm, in between shows, I'm changing because we've got a break right here. I'm putting on these socks because we've got a message to get out there. John's crazy socks. You, both of you helped a lot of people today. You help people every day. That's part of our mission. You know, that's it. why I come and we have to be a great sock store. Yep. We're competing with Walmart and Amazon. So great selection, great service. You order from us today, it's going out. Same day delivery. We'll see the we shipping. can't plug. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> we, but that's what makes the social mission go. Got it. Right? And so we started December of 2016. 
Last year oh, we excuse me, am I boring you? <laughs> no, no, I just I just run along here. Sorry. <laughs> Last year okay. we shipped over forty two thousand orders. Love it. Um, and in a week we're gonna be testifying before Congress to demonstrate to the in that case the House Small Business Committee right. of what can be done and what people with differing abilities can it's do. It's a powerful message. They are great socks and you're two great men and we appreciate you coming on. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It's the best. Be back after this. I'm wearing these. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are pleased to welcome Danielle Corso, executive director of an organization called David's Dream and Believe Cancer Foundation. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Describe the organization. So David's Dream and Believe Cancer Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit that raises funds to provide financial assistance, wellness services, and hope to families in New Jersey battling a cancer diagnosis. Where does the name come from? It comes from our co-founder, David Calderella, who battled stage four head and neck cancer himself in 2010, um, through his battle, he wanted to be able to give back and leave a legacy for his family and to also provide a way for people to have the same, the same care and just mm. care that he did while he was undergoing his own battle. Your connection to all this? It's really serendipitous, actually. I was doing my training for the court appointed special advocates of Cumberland, Gloucester, and Salem counties. Mm. It's a child focused nonprofit. And Hurricane Sandy ripped through the Northeast. And after that happened, I realized that there was a lot to be done at home. So I called a friend who runs a surf company called Jetty, who, was, who had launched their own Unite Rebuild Hurricane Relief campaign. And I said, How can I help? And when I walked in the door, I met David. And from that point forward, after hearing of his own battle and experiencing firsthand his dedication to the mission, I was hooked and never looked back. Oh, David was on Life and Living with Joanna Gagas, right? He was, yeah. Um, let me ask you, I'm curious about something. You help families, you help people dealing with cancer on a lot of levels, don't you? We do, yes. Um, cancer is a disease of the body, of course. But I think what people forget is that it affects the emotional, spiritual, um, em emotional well-being of a person. Um, we have an opportunity to affect positive change through not just giving a grant, because that is, it's helpful. It reduces it stress. But we also are connected to them in a much deeper way. For example? Um, I think the best way to do that is to offer a, a story. It was 2016, and David received a phone call from a man who was minutes away from not taking his chemo medicine anymore because he couldn't put food on the table for his children. So within an hour, David had met him at the local shop right and paid outright for six months of chemo. So I think there, there it shows a fundamental dichotomy between how somebody needs to not only take care of themselves, but also take care of their family. Yeah. And we are able to kind of have a, an effect on both of those. The dollars come from our friends and investors are the ones who told us all about your organization. They, they support yours as well and the folks at Hackensack as well. Right. Do you have to, are you a fundraiser? I think that I create connections. I wouldn't consider myself a fundraiser per se. That's one thing that I um, may have to put some more time into after being only as an executive director for three months. But we, we raise funds in a multitude of ways, but it really comes down to an amazing community and a group of people and a volunteer board of directors who just put time and effort into meeting new people and connecting people and, yeah, sometimes asking for money. Um, and mind you, the money is huge. We need money coming in to be able to do what we right. do. But I wouldn't consider my, myself a fundraiser per se. What's the Care to Share program? So the Care to Share program is a investor's bank program where a percentage, they, they'll look at a, a set of bank accounts and the bottom line number, they'll take a percentage of that from their the investors' bank funds mm. and donate it back to DDBCF. To your organization? Yes, and it costs the, the bank account holder nothing. So hold on, I want to be clear, the customer. It costs them nothing. 
Really? Nothing at all. So all you have to do is have an investor's bank account right. and link it to David's Dream and Believe, and we will receive a check on a quarterly basis. How rewarding is this? Because I know there's some other events. So real quick, before yeah. I ask you the rewarding question, some of the other events include? So upcoming, we have the Frank A. Cosimano Golf Classic. It's in memory of one of our board of directors' fathers who was just a, just such a charitable person. Um, that's on June 4th. Right. Uh, um, People can check out the site. Yeah, I'm sorry, out. so I won't give too many dates then. And then following that, we have the Stafford Run for Hope, which is in Manahawkin, New Jersey. What do you get out of this? What do I get out of it? Yeah. Um, I, in terms of satisfaction. Really. Well, so we act as a beacon of hope for families battling a cancer diagnosis. And in that hope, there is the opportunity to make a difference of a lifetime. And there's a positive ripple that changes lives beyond my own. And that's really all it comes down to is having a positive impact. And if any way that I can do that is basically why I do what I do on a daily basis. Well done. We've had the website up uh, throughout the program. We're going to wrap the break here, right? Um, Danielle Corso is executive director of David's Dream and Believe Cancer Foundation. Tell everyone again, David. David Calderella. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure you. people know. Yes. We appreciate you coming I'm in. I'm happy to be Stay here. Stay right there. Thank you. We'll be back right after this. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. This segment uh, is simply part of a much larger initiative that we're involved in here in public television and Fios on all of our platforms called Right From The Start NJ. It's a public awareness campaign that tries to focus on the issues that matter, the challenges, the opportunities for infants and toddlers. And we are pleased to welcome as part of that series, uh, Caitlin Mulcahy, Associate Director of the Center for Autism and Early Childhood Mental Health, Montclair State University, a great university. Yes. Happens to be my alma mater, oh, a great, great. place. <laughs> um, so this right from the start and Jay campaign, you were part of a forum with eight professionals in the field. What was the biggest takeaway for you? We did three half hours, by the way, go on our website right from the start on Jay, you can see ex excerpts from it. What was your biggest takeaway? Because I thought, oh, we can have enough to talk about. That's yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. No, the biggest takeaway was that we didn't have enough time to talk about all of the ways that this campaign can impact our society. Like? So when we talk about infants and toddlers, we talk about prenatal parenting, um, we hit everything, economics, politics, um, workforce, how we are as a society. We actually, education. It, health, it, it is the start of who we all become. So it's almost like you can never have enough time to talk about it. Why don't we, as a society, talk about infants and toddlers and prenatal mm -hmm. care more? I, I think, unfortunately, our paradigm has been towards intervention down what the does line. That mean? So intervening Wait till when. Wait a problem later? Right, inter intervening in problems rather than promoting health. Um, and you can look at lots of politics to see that that's how our paradigm has been. I think we have an opportunity now to Par shift. Paradigm meaning our model, our worldview, the way we choose to deal Correct. with things. Mm -hmm. I think we have an opportunity now to shift and understand that that is not only expensive, it's too late. We need to think about early intervention as early as we can. Define it. Early intervention for what and with whom? For families at the beginning. Um, so the earliest Give us moments. A for instance. Earliest moments of family development, prenatal. We don't do enough to support families when they're expecting children, particularly in different communities. So there's an enormous disparity in the access what to prenatal care. I mean, but the, uh, no disrespect, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm devil's advocate. Yeah. The baby's not there. Right. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so what? Why is it so important? Yeah. Uh, because of what we have learned about the brain growth in the womb and also prenatal experience for parents. So a pregnant mom... If she's under stress, the baby feels that stress. The baby feels that stress? Yes. Yes. Biologically. And biologically feels that stress and actually can have their genetic code changed because of the stress of the parent. Therefore? Therefore, we have to start that early, supporting our young families so that they can get a better start in life. The amount of research that's been done on how important early intervention is to prevent issues down the line, like special education, juvenile delinquency, um, promoting graduation in high school. All of that can be linked to the first three to five years of life. So it's interesting, when someone, um, and I know there are studies that back this up, 
and we did talk about it in our forum, mm -hmm. uh, right from the start, NJ forum. But what struck me is someone says, well, you know, say it costs 30, I don't know, check on this number, between 30 and $40,000 a year to house someone in a mm. correctional facility. Right. Well, you don't have a choice. Meaning you don't right. get to say as a taxpayer, I don't want to support that, meaning it's going to happen. Right. There is a connection, unless I have this wrong, between what happens birth, prenatal, if you will, to three. If that infant toddler does not get what he or she needs, particularly given other socioeconomic factors, mm -hmm. there's a greater likelihood that that person, as he or she grows, could potentially wind up? Yes. Dealing with criminal real issues? Am I making too much of that? Yes, am, I over, no. am I oversimplifying it? Um, no, I think we have to speak quite clearly. And you can do a linear watch from what happens in the earliest years to what happens later. And typically, it has to do with educational outcomes. And then from there, we know that if you don't have um, strong education, you're not going to get a job. When you don't have a job, you don't have economic opportunity. And you look for other adaptive strategies, oftentimes, that might take you to a criminal behavior. So from the beginning, you can actually prevent those things which cost way more money. Talk about cost. Early childhood uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. And I say professionals because some are professionals. Yes. Some just work there. They're not, yes. I shouldn't say they're not professionals, but they don't no. have all the same right. credentials. How well trained are they and how consistent is that training? Right, it's not consistent. Um, and unfortunately, while some people might have beautiful hearts and be amazing caregivers. They really care. They really care. It is a hard job. People call it babysitting. It's actually brain building. Um, brain building? Brain what building. What do you mean by that? We know that the earliest relationships are what builds the brain in the first three to five years of life. It's those children's relationships with caregivers. So when we sort of disparage these people who do this work all day oh, long. Oh, they're babysitting. They're babysitting, yes. And some of our families have to use care from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. at night. So, yes, it's absolutely parents' parents' job to raise children. I've heard that argument many times. Oh, it's a parent's job. We don't want to put our money into these public services. But for many, many families, they are using public services from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. So those caregivers at those centers are crucially important to those children. It's not taking away the parent. It's saying, we've got to bring everybody in. It actually literally does take a village. That is not a saying. That is not a political statement. That is truth. That is fact. Anybody who has a family knows that regardless of socioeconomic status, you need your people. You need so, your so, people so, around so, you. Sorry for interrupting. Mm -hmm. What is it, Caitlin, that what should, we should, what should we be doing as a society, whether in terms of public policy mm -hmm. or actions in other ways, to raise the standards for those who are caring for the most vulnerable, infants and toddlers? Yes. I think initially it needs to go with raising their wages. It's very difficult to ask those people who work in, those, in that field to go to school to get more education when they don't have a living wage to go to their jobs. And most of those families, most of those women principally who work at these child care centers, also have to send their children to, to child care. And because they make a certain rage, the children, uh, their children are going to less quality child care centers. And it's this cascade mm. of disparity. So first, their wages need to be increased for that question. Um, then, yes, we do need to professionalize. Um, and we are doing a, a good job in this state, actually. We are working to professionalize um, the workers who work in early care and education through a number of different initiatives. One is the Grow NJ Kids initiative. Grow NJ Kids. By yes. the way, go on our website right from the start, NJ. You'll see uh, this initiative. Tell everyone again what it is and why it matters. So that's the name in New Jersey for our quality. Grow NJ Kids. Go, right, Grow NJ Kids. It's our quality rating improvement system. So the quality rating improvement system is actually a national initiative to raise the quality of early care and education in the states. And states sign on, and we have done that. And one of the things that's required is to professionalize, to raise the training of the people who are doing the work. Um, we also have professional organizations like the Coalition for Infant Toddler Educators, and one that I'm involved in, which is called the New Jersey Association for Infant Mental Health. All these organizations will be listed on this campaign on the website. Go to Before I let you go, what do you hope right from the start NJ accomplishes over the several years that we hope to be mm. doing what we're doing? Yes, yeah, so I think a huge opportunity is to ensure that many people who interact with infants, toddlers, and young children are brought to the same table, similar like you did today. We talked about how... In the forum. In the forum, yes. There was, there's more to talk about. There's so much more to talk about. And because it touches so many different constituents and, and agencies, it's important for us to be on the same page. We can't prioritize one thing over another, universal pre-K versus early intervention versus home visiting. That's not our job. Our job is to say this is all connected. If we actually want to be right from the start, 
we all have to be together. Can't thank you enough for being part of this most important effort and uh, thank our friends and colleagues at the Montclair State University. Yes, well done. Thank Stay. you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, RWJ Barnabas Health, PSENG, NJM Insurance Group, Delta Dental of New Jersey, The Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ and by Johnson & Johnson. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. You may not have heard of TAVR. Raj and Sandhya have. It's the minimally invasive alternative to open heart valve replacement. RWJ Barnabas Health is New Jersey's leading TAVR provider, and we continue to perfect it. Patients are often back to their lives in just a few days. Innovative valve replacement surgery. Because you can't be replaced. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.